the gig economy has been unleashed and the next step in the humanization of pets is on your mobile device. Is Rover the new best way to take care of your best friend? Or is this trend for the dogs? Regular viewers know that I'm a big fan of the humanization of pets thesis. The idea that Americans are spending more and more money on their co companion animals because we now treat them like members of the family, as you know I do. But what really gets me excited is when you combine the humanization of pets with some of the hottest tech trends around, like mobile and social. Which brings me to Rover, the privately held company founded six years ago that's already become the nation's largest network of pet sitters and dog walkers. Their app lets you scroll through the local sitters and walkers and then book one with the push of a button. Hey, call it Uber for your dog. And I bet it might not be too long before Rover starts thinking about coming public. At least I hope so, because you know how much I love this thesis. Last week, they did a $65 million fundraise, and the company also recently acquired the largest national competitor, Dog Vacay, making it the undisputed leader in the space. So let's take a closer look with Aaron Easterly, the CEO of Rover, to learn more about how it's revolutionizing the way we take care of our pets. Mr. Easterly, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you. Well, have thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Sure, have a seat. Okay, so I've been thinking about your company. And the, the first thing I would tell you is, is that, because uh, we have rescue dogs and we, we walk them, the first thing I tell you is, is that this is uh, an electric company. I say that because when I mention you, I find <laughs> so many people use you, but they use you in part because the alternative is so expensive, yeah. particularly when they go away. Yes. Because the kennel is really outrageously expensive. How much is Rover versus kennel? Yeah, so for us, uh, two-thirds of our business is actually coming from people that refuse to use kennels. Yes, this so is they're coming true. from the friends, family, neighbor segment. So mm -hmm. the person that used to go down the Rolodex and you know, call in favors with their mother-in-law, right. that's our primary customer segment. We do still share from kennels, but it's a minority of the business. Now, uh, what do you think of that Uber comparison? Because one of your big investors was a very early investor in Uber, <laughs> so I know that's what they're looking for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's fine. Okay. I mean, we've been called the Airbnb for dogs, the Uber for dogs. You know, I think it's a decent connotation, although most people, once they use us, they realize there's a, a very different experience and a richer uh, experience with the service providers. Well, in, in some ways, I feel like uh, Rover.com is uh, it, it's short. It, it doesn't, I mean, if you called it PetCare.com or National Dog Sitting and Walking, the reason I say that is because you are so much more now than what you first yeah. started as. Yeah, we, we are. We actually have a decent amount of uh, cats going through the system, which uh, Rover right. is arguably not the best brand associated with cats, uh, but a lot of cats are going through the system. We've had horses, pot-bellied pigs, right. hamsters. Um, and we're branching a bunch of different services. Um, so we always thought that this was going to be a huge national brand on pets, and it's becoming that. Well, are you able to offer, say, could you do your own line of food? Could you do your own line of products that, that would be sold if people wanted them? Uh, we are very excited about the adjacencies. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm not going to tell you all the adjacencies we're planning to go into, but what I will say is we think we can be the dominant brand in all of pets. Uh, most, right. most pet companies... They either have small penetration of the target audience or very low loyalty. We're one of the few brands that actually have high penetration as well as high share of wallet, which okay. puts us in a unique position. There you go, because I felt on the one hand, there's an expensive kennel. We cannot believe our, yeah. our bill for kennel. On the other hand, there's Amazon, which you can't be Amazon, because the one thing that Amazon can't do is walk your dog. <laughs> yeah. At least not yet. <laughs> right? I mean, it is like this natural kind of place that you really are with 50 million pets. I mean, it, it's possible that you could have a multi, multi-billion dollar business if everything goes right. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Really? So you're yes. on board for there. And how about international? That could happen too. So we're now the largest uh, player in Canada, and we're looking at uh, which countries do we move into next. How do you make sure that everybody's good, that your people are good? We only approve, you know, 15 to 20 percent of applicants. There's I knew you. I read that, but who gets turned down? What kind of person gets turned down? Just give me the, what do you have to have? Well, if you don't pass the background test, you're instantly going to get turned down. Um, our technology also scores people and predicts how good they're going to be before they even go live. And we have humans review it as well. So people that are doing this primarily for money and not for the love of pets, we tend to turn down. That's true. Now, you also do have insurance, though. We do. Yes. And do people, I mean, how many people feel like they need it? Uh, most people probably don't feel like they need it, but it's always nice to know it's available there. Uh, just another uh, uh, risk factor that right. some people might be turned off by, but we take it away. We take it off the table. Um, uh, those of us who have dogs, uh, 
just know how important they are, but could you just speak to people who uh, who don't have them about what's changed and how people, like, you know, the photos of their dog versus them, you know, I mean, there's no, <laughs> just give people, because if you don't have a dog, you're probably thinking, what is what are these two guys talking about? Yeah, so in the U.S., 76% of Americans, if you said, are you an owner of a dog or are you a parent, they would say parent. So it's, it's not even a family member totally, anymore. It's specifically totally a parent-child relationship. And like all parenting trends, you want to be the best parent possible. Uh, what's the right food? What's the right training methods? How can you make the best child in the world? How can you feel proud of their behavior? Sometimes you're not always proud, no, but you're always endeavoring to be proud. In, in the meantime, you got the national ad campaign, yes. which uh, I, I, I guess you have plenty of money to be able to do that, right? Yeah, this was the first year we did national integrated ad campaign to raise awareness, and it's gone really well. And how do you feel about the idea of... Uh, that you can still, because you want to be the first mover, you, you, it's okay to not be making money now, but with that new acquisition, at a certain point, you can flip if you want to, right? Yeah. We, we expect to be profitable in December of this year because of the seasonality in the travel okay. business. We may slide back a little bit in Q1 of next year, but then permanent profitability, uh, Q2, Q3 of 2018. Well, why not strike when the iron's hot and literally like when the next few months come public? And you know what, look, I have <laughs> IDEX slabs. I mean, you know, I'm out of ideas, yeah. you know this. Yeah. This is like the <laughs> No, they all get taken over. Yeah. Anyone in your slot gets taken over. Is there a possibility at some point, if you have permanent profitability, that, that people at home can uh, buy a share in this? This is what we want. Yeah, I, I think so. I'm not okay. here to announce a timeline or a date. Know. But I, I will say we think that is the most likely outcome for this company. Um, with the scale that we're at and the chance to grow and become something uh, very big. Well, cool, because it's just, you know, I, pet food, tough category. Zoetis, too many others, right? And IDEX, well, fabulous, but, you know, it's moved a lot. We need a new one. That's Aaron <laughs> Easton, the CEO of Rover.com. Please read about this company. Please Google it. There is so much excitement to it. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.